Hi there. We've had an unprecedented amount of interest in this new product here. It's an eye-catching Windows 7 Slate tablet PC and it's made by ASUS. It's called the EP121. Now you can tell by looking at the really glossy and reflective screen there that this is an attempt by Microsoft and ASUS to target the home user market. So inevitably this device is going to be compared to, of course, the iPad which I have here. As you can see, the ASUS EP121 has a 12 inch screen compared to the iPad which has a 10 inch screen. So it's a fair bit bigger. That also means that it's a little bit heavier than the iPad. But let's take a look at a couple of important distinctions that you need to make between the two devices. Now because this device has two USB ports just here and it runs Windows, um, you could plug any device that you want into this without any accessories. So you could plug in a USB memory stick, you could plug in a USB hard drive, you could plug in your camera directly onto there and let download the photo straight across to the device. Um, you could plug in a printer if you wanted to. Not that I suggest you do because this device is about going paperless. Um, you could also plug in HDMI. You can actually plug that into your TV or your projector so you've got an easy way to connect and uh, do a demonstration or a PowerPoint presentation or something like that. And you've also got an SD card reader there so you can take the memory out of your camera, pop it straight into the device here and read it straight off. The EP121 not only has the light touch capacitive touchscreen which is multi-touch, it also has, just tucked away in here, an active digitizer pen. Personally, I think that a tablet device should help you to replace paper in your life. Now, to have any chance of doing that, you need to have some sort of input method that is more precise than your dumb finger. Even if you type most of the time, there are thousands of situations where typing just simply is inappropriate. For instance, if you're in a meeting and you wanted to take meeting notes, or if you needed to sign a document, or if you're doing a sketch or some artwork, Obviously you can't type to do that. All of that is fine detail work that requires a fine instrument. That's why we invented the pen about 5,000 years ago. Now here's the iPad's answer to that problem. It's called a capacitive stylus and it works on a capacitive touchscreen. It actually works on, on this device here, but it also specifically works on the iPad. So you can see the capacitive stylus here. It's, uh, it's the tip of the, the stylus is about 5 mil thick, so I normally relate this to a crayon, something that you used to use in kindergarten. It's got a spongy tip, and uh, basically it feels just like a sponge from the kitchen sink, and it's got a sort of a squidgy feel when you put it on the screen. Now what you'll see is when you write, I don't know if you can see that there in fine detail, but um, the edges of the curves are very square. And that reflects the fact that the iPad, the sample rate of the movements of this, and you can see when I start moving that I often get a square shape because uh, it doesn't keep up with the pen and the stylus. And so the, uh, the curves end up being a little bit square. Now what the software does is it tries to approximate where, where the pen's going to go and, and draw a curve around that. But it's really quite an inferior sort of experience. And you can see by the size of the lettering that you have to do to achieve anything, it's really not practical to write on the screen or to take notes on the screen. Now let's compare that to this, which is called a Wacom Active Digitizer. We don't call this a stylus because it's actually a smart electronic device. It doesn't have a battery on board or anything like that. It has some electronics inside and it's actually powered by putting it near the screen. So it doesn't need to touch the screen to work, um, but when you do touch it, it's pressure sensitive. So it has 256 levels of pressure sensitivity. And of course, uh, many digital artists out there are gonna say, yeah, does it work in Photoshop? Absolutely it does, because it's made by Wacom. So that will work with pressure. You can, uh, you can use pressure in your brushes in, in Photoshop. So the hardware used here has a much higher sample rate, so it's actually monitoring the movements much more quickly than what the iPad can because of that digitizer layer. Now I've got a, a thick pen on there because I wanted to show you that the pen is also pressure sensitive. So the harder I press, the thicker the line, and the lighter I press, the thinner the line. And the best thing about this is that I can combine both pen and touch input. So I can actually just uh, tap the screen there and uh, grab the page with my finger, move it up and down. When I go back to the pen, uh, it still writes. So it actually differentiates between the two input methods. So the ASUS EP121 not only has very advanced touch input, it actually also has a really smart digital pen. Now that simply means that taking notes, or doing markup, or uh, signing a document, or doing digital artwork is absolutely a breeze with this device. The iPad on the other hand, with the capacitive stylus simply doesn't rate in this department. It's really not a device that's designed for any input like this. 
and, and it shows in the output that you've seen. One of the important distinctions that I like to make between an iPad and a tablet PC is of course file management. Um, now of course interestingly if you bought one of these you would actually have to plug it into one of these just to make it work when you first got it. Everything really that we do is file based so you really have to have a good file management system and that's one of the frustrations that I really found first up with the iPad. Well with this device with a tablet PC you can actually just open up your network straight away and you could download files straight off of your network and of course you can't do that with an iPad without some sort of app and you probably have to put an app on the other end and make the two talk together and it's really an exercise for geeks. What we want is we want to be able to just open up and find some files and just let it work. So for instance if I wanted to get um, say some music or a, a video off of my main computer which is just here um, there you go, I've actually got the device, it's automatically found it and it's come up and I can actually go in here and, and look at the videos that are available. So it'll just automatically synchronize directly with the with the server. And there you go, you can see I've, I've got all my videos up on the screen. Um, there we go, so there's some 30 Rock episodes there that I've got on my TV and I can just watch them directly on this device here. There we go. So I won't play that now, but um, you can see that that's just amazing. Um, that's without any configuration whatsoever that I'm actually able to communicate with another computer without having to plug the tablet device into something else. I'm just able to access the files, and that's really gold. Now, you want to browse the web? Well, guess what? You've got your choice of web browsers. You've got full web browsing capabilities with no restrictions. So um, in this case here, what's preloaded, of course, is uh, Internet Explorer. Um, it is uh, touch uh, capable, and I can zoom in and out and do all those sorts of things. I can scroll with my finger, which is fantastic. I can click on links, no problem at all. And, uh, and it just works. Again, no restrictions, no f missing flash, and there you go. I can play a video straight off of the web page. No problem at all. So you can choose your own web browser with this device. If you want to run Firefox, go ahead, run Firefox. Nobody's, nobody's telling you not to. Um, if you want to run Chrome, absolutely. What a, it's a good choice, but it's your choice, and that's the important thing with the tablet PC. Now, a lot of people tell me, um, of course, that uh, iPad has instant on, and that's really the big deal, and of course, Windows can't do that. Well, can it? Well, let's see. Um, we run our devices, and I run my tablet PC here in standby mode, and I'll run that for weeks at a time in standby mode. And I just simply put it into sleep mode just by flicking the power switch, switch there on the top. That's now in sleep mode. You can see that the light is flashing on the top telling me it's in sleep mode. Turn it back on again, and it's up and running. Okay, so that's instant on. Um, no two ways about it. This device has instant on capabilities. One of the great things that it does have is a Gorilla Glass screen. So that's a glass that's made by Corning, um, and Corning obviously experts in glass. Um, it's five times stronger than a typical tablet screen. So for instance, if I took the iPad here and I dropped it like that from about a foot off of the table here, it's very likely that screen would break just from that drop. Whereas this one is far stronger than the iPad screen, and if there's one thing that we know that happens to tablets all the time, people break the glass. As an entertainment platform, and I'm really talking about gaming here, um, this device should never be compared to the iPad because the iPad really is a, an exceptional gaming platform. Um, it's also great for all those little widgets and apps that you can download to do little bits and pieces. But let's be straight here. Firstly, this product is never going to outsell. Now that's because there's just simply too much ill-informed media coverage out there to allow that to happen. Microsoft would have to do something absolutely amazing in terms of communicating what you can really do on a Windows tablet in order to change the perception that's out there. They're having a little bit of a go, but it's nowhere near enough when you compare it to something like those annoying iPad ads that are on TV all the time. 